I bought these 9 games in a Steam Summer Sale bundle and here is my verdict on them. All of them are resource management games with their own spin on the genre. Some of these games was on my radar from before and others I have never even heard about. There was a discount for buying all 9 of them so I thought I would check them all out and see if I liked them or not. I played them all for 30 minutes to get the feel and taste for it before the verdict on them falls. Stacklands. This was one of the games I had been looking at before. You stack your cards on top of each other for them to do things. For example, the villager to pick berries for the apple to be turned into an apple tree and so on. You gather resources, sell them to buy new packs, expand your village, feed your villagers or they will die. There are some kind of combo systems, which I did not delve too much into the first half hour, but I managed to kill a rabbit or two. After the half hour was over, I still want to get back to the game to get further into it. All in all, I think Stacklands was a great game to play through, but off to the next one, which is Pyramidia! Pyramidia is your typical colony sim where you gather resources, build buildings to get access to more resources, expand your village and force it to explore an internet unknown because you deplete the resources at hand. An internet unknown? There is where the skeletons live. They come alive at night and chase your villagers around. I did not want to find out what happens if the skeleton got, got to me, so I did my best effort kiting them around at night. The simplistic graphics and the UI is well thought out. In many other games there is a pop-up tutorial that railroads you through your decision making in the early game, but Pyramidia lets the game design and its simplistic graphic handle that instead. After the 30 minutes were over, I still wanted to continue and further explore this game and what lies out there in the fog. But it was time to look at the next one, which is Sunset Kingdom! While Pyramidia lets you control individual villagers in a single town, Sunset Kingdom lets you expand your town to a network of towns. That way you can text your people even more. It feels more sandboxy than the other two games we played before this, and the people we control are reduced to only a few pixels, which for me makes it a little bit harder to care about them when they suddenly die and get replaced automatically. Feed them to keep them happy, and your bandits and raiders that steal your resources, and gather stuff so you can expand your kingdom even more. After the 30 minutes was up, I felt that I got the hang of what the deal was, expanding, gathering and unlocking, but nothing more than um, when the 30 minutes were over, it was uh, easier to drop than the uh, two previous games. And now over to something completely different, Suku Luku Deluxe. At first glance, the graphics really put me off this one. Had it not been for the forced 30 minutes, I would have uh, dropped this and never gotten into it. However, once I got over the graphics and got into the game, there was a pretty neat uh, transportation network puzzle game hid hidden uh, underneath there. The first 30 minutes got me through the tutorial on how to generate uh, resources, grow cities, building your trade network, setting up automatic transport systems for all this. And it introduced me to the first uh, few minutes of a map where there is some kind of monument to build. The graphics were a little bit too coarse for my taste, but once I got over it, I think I could enjoy the transportation network resource management puzzle game that is hidden underneath here. Next up is Similand. This game greatly exceeded my expectations. You start by placing a human on a map, and then you give them resources and events based on what you draw from your deck of cards. When a deck of cards is out, the game ends and you get rewards based on how you did within the game. These uh, rewards can be used to buy more cards for your deck, which prolongs your next game and allows humanity to grow even further. You need to sample resources to give humanity resources, and inspect the resources to give them research. At the same time, you need to respect humanity's wishes to generate enough fate for it to let you play more cards, and you also need to feed them so they won't die. Also, there is bears. It is really fun to see the tiny humans grow into a civilization based on the things we throw at them, and I had a hard time putting this one down when the 30 minutes was over. Definitely coming back to this one. And now entering Lucky Town. Again we have a game where the initial graphics are hiding a game I'm truly enjoying a lot. You are building a town that is under constant siege of enemies. Resources you have available for you each round are determined by rolling dice, and you need to balance out building out your economy so you can create more dice with building out defensive buildings that can take care of the constant stream of hostiles that try to, to destroy our way of life. Most buildings care about adjacency, so it, it also becomes kind of a puzzle game with the added urgency of efficiency with a constant stream of enemies breathing down your neck. Definitely mine kind of yam, as when the self-inflicted 30 minutes were up, I just went a few more turns and got totally lost in the game. I liked this a lot, despite the initial unappealing graphics. 
Now over to something a little bit more mysterious, as in Mistwards we are a shipwrecked queen left on a deserted island, with nothing but our bare fists to gather resources and a poisonous fog to keep us at bay. The main separator of this game to other colony sims is that we need to build and maintain light sources to keep the dangerous poisonous mist at bay. We can build houses and rec recruit villages to work for us, but they need to eat food or else they will stay at home and refuse to work. There are definitely some mystery aspects to this island as well. Bats that are attacking us and stealing our planks, poisonous gemstones, random uranium lying around, etc. The challenge here lies within building self-sustaining uh, small towns that can do tasks for you uh, with the limited amount of replenishable food available in an area. I like it, definitely worth more than the 30 minutes of playtime I gave it. Now we are looking at Helopedia. Solar System Sandbox is the best way to describe Helopedia in only a three word sentence. The goal is to feed the sun various items to make them spit out a new planet which you then can terraform with various items you find around in asteroid belts. For example, you can fill them up with oxygen, then set fire to coal and release carbon dioxide. You can drop ice on the planet and if it's hot enough it will melt into puddles and then generate clouds. Maintaining the balance in the atmosphere is important, as if you run out of stuff, all life on planet will die as it returns to a wasteland. The first half an hour was enough for me to terraform my planets into both lake worlds, savannas and wooden plains. Depending on what environment you push insect eggs, seeds or nuts into, different kinds of flora and fauna grows out of it. After the 30 minutes was over, I went going on for a little bit more just to try to balance out my third planet as well. Last of the bunch is Clickland. Clickland is a click manager tower defense game where you click re resources to gather them and spend them to build resource buildings and defensive towers. Balancing expanding your economy while also trying to fit defensive buildings to defend your town against woodland critters is a fine experience, but constantly spending your clicks to refill all of your resource buildings is a tedious process. Also, there is something with the game flow that just doesn't quite suit my play experience. You earn in-game money throughout the game that can be spent in the in-game shop to unlock more buildings, and these buildings are vital to survive long enough to uh, win the game in the long end. After the 30 minutes was over, I didn't mind putting it away. It was an okay game, but the click management was not my cup of tea. And that is that! Have you played any of these 9 games yourself? Do you agree or disagree with my opinions? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to see a proper playthrough of either of these games, comment which game you want or vote up somebody that has, that has already commented your game. Like the video if you think this kind of content was entertaining and subscribe if you want to see more from The Harbinger. This was it for now. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!